certainly by Stradok, who likes to proxy both the factory and the starport, and then follows up with yeah. this crazy 1-1-1. One, one, one. I don't know if you remember that game. Strelok has... He, he's really interesting. Like, he has really, really innovative builds, and a lot of times people don't really credit him with being super innovative, but he does have these crazy builds that... I almost feel like he's the cat's version of... of Terran? Terran, yeah. But he does play a lot of standard play as well. But once in a while, he just brings out this build... Yeah. I think he's specifically one of the curtailed for his opponent too. I think he's one of those players who would need excels and strategies much more than micro or macro for that matter. Yes. Of course, Stralog being an expert root war player does have awesome macro, but it's certainly his strategies which sets him a little bit apart of all the other good Terrans that we have. Me and Stralog used to train s a lot actually and talk a lot in the beta, Starcraft beta. And then uh, when Wings of Liberty just popped out, he, he just soared above everybody and he was super, super good then. Yeah. He was at the very first International StarCraft 2 tournament back then as well in Gamescom. Yeah. That's the first time I met Strelok and back then he had a super strong Ukrainian <laughs> accent. And I remember like I was talking with him and it was so hard to uh, understand all <laughs> the things he said. And I was with, I don't know, like one of the other StarCraft 2 guys back then. He's like, hey man, that's uh, it was Deloven I think, my Dutch friend. He's like, Strelok is a really nice guy, I just have trouble understanding him. Uh, but Strelok has changed so much. Uh, nowadays I find it super easy to communicate with Strelok. I think uh, yeah. I think that's really one of those awesome things about pro gaming in general that you learn so much uh, English in general. Like when I was in high school, I don't think I learned all that much. But as soon as I started with Warcraft, I had like these guys who were making fun of me every time I made a mistake. So I tried to not make those mistakes again. You know the guys that you I, uh, that uh, you hate yeah. on that moment, but later on you're actually kind of grateful. You learn the difference between then and then. <laughs> it's pretty cool. The first time I met Strelok, it was awesome because. I not only met Strelak, I met Demaga and White Rock. Oh. So all three of them together, it's like, it's like uh, gamers gone wild, bro. <laughs> it's like the best experience ever. And See uh, a uh, gas opening over here. Let's. I, I'll yeah, let yeah. you do this one. <laughs> I'll let you do this. Okay, we got a gas opening over here from Select. Very interesting that he's only putting two on gas. If this is not a mistake, he's looking to actually fast expand, and uh, and get kind of like a. You know, a delayed command center, but kind of a fast factory, and not have to actually commit so oh. much gas. But this is very nice. Binsky really poked in with that SCV, and he did see the refinery. Oh, I think wow. that's a little bit sloppy by Select, and I think that way he should have taken the right refinery, because now he's giving information to Binsky for no reason. Well, that's okay, because he's going reactor and expansion, so... Um, so you, you know, Binsky think he's kind of throwing him up? Yeah, Binsky's going to say, okay, well, my opponent is capable of doing Banshee. a 1-1-1 one, one, one Banshee. He's, he can do, like, Blue Flame Hellion, some sort of drop, like Hellion Marine drop. Uh, so there is a lot to actually be scared of, but uh, that might incur some sort of scan or something like that. And uh, from that, Select will probably get ahead just because he has Command Center coming up pretty soon here. But I think it's just going to be regular Red Flame Hellion. I don't know what he's doing with this reactor. I think it's going to be Red Flame Hellion, uh, or excuse me, the factory with the reactor, but I'm not sure just yet. Hmm. Red Flame Hellion. They sound more powerful than regular Hellions. <laughs> <laughs> than Blue Flame Hellion? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, like if red you could say, like, I can make Hellions, but you can also make Red Flame Hellions. And it's like, wow, man. <laughs> I don't think anyone would ever pick regular Hellions. They would all go for the Red Flame, red flame Hellions. Hellions. <laughs> Sounds like some Diablo thing. Imagine you can have, like, a yellow flame Hellion. Hellion. That'd be pretty badass. Or man. a purple flame. <laughs> Suddenly, like. <laughs> <laughs> Just get the whole rainbow, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> rainbow hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cuteness overload. Imagine if you can have, like, wow, I want someone to create a mod right now where rainbows, or like where Hellions have upgraded, shoot rainbows. Imagine, you like. You want Whimsy Shire in StarCraft. You don't know what that is because you didn't play Diablo. No. But it's basically the rainbow land with the unicorns and, and happiness. You know this game called Robot Unicorn Attack? No. You don't know this game? No. I'm very good at it. Are you? Yes. I actually, like, I played another stream once and I got, like, 160,000. Pretty good. Jeez. That's a high score. But you know who's very, very good at it? Who? Naniwa. Really? Yeah. And you know who's What's extreme? What's it called again? Robot Unicorn Attack. Yeah. It has a very nice song on the background. But you know who's extremely good in it? Who? Cloud. <laughs> you know, when Naniwa and Cloud used to live in a gaming house in Germany, uh -huh. they played Robot Unicorn Attack. Like best of trees, and the loser had to pay for dinner. Every single time you say that, I think it's the most ridiculous sounding thing in the world. <laughs> the only other game I played was like, here's a new earth, but that was until yeah. later, just so I could play with my brothers. Oh, this is just like a flash game. It's not serious. Oh, you okay. You can just Google it. The other game is. Well, it's actually very serious. Oh, what am I saying? There's the scan, by the way. Uh, just because he's so far in the dark. 
The other game I used to play was uh, Heroes of Might Magic 3. Probably one of the best games ever. We see Siege Tech uh, going down on either side. Actually, when the show is over today, I will play a little bit of Robot Unicorn Attack live you on stream. Heroes of Might Magic 3. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's addictive. <laughs> hey, but do you think Binsky is able to put the pieces together? Of course, he did see the timing of this uh, yeah. factory and he saw the floating star point. So are you sure that he's aware of the fact that Select does have a pretty quick expense as well? Yes, he knows that. He knows it, Once you see the star port actually lifting off like that, yeah. there, there's two things that you're really scared of. It could have been he just finished the Banshee and then uh, yeah, he's wants lifting to switch off. Up. Exactly. Or it could be he went for an expansion. I think at this point, because he doesn't see a Banshee, Banshees normally come in around seven minutes. He knows for sure, okay, mm. he went an expansion. It's slightly delayed. I see, I see. Uh, Binsky is taking control of the middle of the map right now with uh, uh, five to six Marines. I love how he sends most of the Marines back and only keeps a single Marine there, so he's able to see the incoming army of Select. Uh, that's a little bit terrifying. Oh, Binsky hits a very ugly supply block. I think he's going to use... Does he have energy for call down supply depots? No, he doesn't. Wow, this oh is my gosh. the worst moment ever to get supply block. Yep. But I guess a tank on the high ground. It's oh, going to help so much. Both these players do have uh, siege mode done. But Whoa. oh my god, it's actually too far forward. It's going to be picked off immediately. Thankfully, there is that one Viking to help out. Uh, if he would pick up the Marines oh. and immediately drop them on the high ground, that would have been a big play. Yeah. And I think he's still going to try to do this. And I think Binsky is in a lot of trouble. Uh, Binsky might be. That one Viking isn't targeting down the medevac. And wow, these Marines are going to die. So Select, well. I think, getting way too far in there, salvaging his one siege tank. So both these players just trading off their siege tanks. Binsky, let's go ahead and look yeah. at it. 35 harvesters to 35. Both these players are fairly even. Actually, they're really, really even. Although yep. um, what, uh, Select has lost a little bit more, actually, uh, just about double. That actually turned out quite okay for Binsky because I yeah. really think the biggest mistake that Select made, uh, like he was afraid to lose the Medifact, so he flew the Medifact quite far over here to the north side, which made him lose high ground vision, so the tank couldn't shoot at the high yes. ground, which allowed Binsky to come really close and pick off the tank with ease, while well, normally that shouldn't have been all that easy. Uh, that was a really crucial moment right there. Yeah, and you see these players actually going for siege tanks. Normally we don't see that, but Antigua Shipyard is a map where position is so important if you're able to get your opponent's area and then, you know, siege up like this. You're actually able to do just so much damage. Oh. A lot of times we, we see this in exchange for, let's say, upgrades and going mass bio, but not on Antigua Shipyard. You always fight like this. Select has to be careful. He only has two Vikings over here. Well, there are three oh. Vikings for Binsky. Uh, if Select does have a couple of Marines there, I think Binsky didn't see them because they were like hiding below the tanks. Some sneaky Marines, man. Yeah, yeah. He could have easily uh, um, dropped one of them too and then just protected with the siege tanks, but he's just going to back out from here. Binsky again being supply capped. Wow, that's really holding him back because yeah. other than that, he's actually been doing pretty well in the engagement so far. It was unfortunate that he had to cancel these two barracks. Um, he was even on workers for all the time, but he keep, because he keeps supply blocking himself, Select is actually having a lead right now. Select is going to try to put up the container over oh here, but he's oh. not sieged at all. Yeah, and Select might lose a lot from oh, this. He's going to siege one ready. thing. And the Marines are going to tear through. Binsky is actually going to wow. come up way ahead in this fight. Although he does lose a lot of his Vikings, it looks like he will be able to get out. I don't think that tank will... Oh, he didn't continue giving chase. I think he would have been able to get rid of that one siege Maybe tank. Maybe he should pick up like one tank in the medevac and then fly yeah. over and drop it. How that's cool would that play? That's exactly what I was thinking, but... Uh, maybe he's gonna do that. Nope. No. Uh, oh, but he might still get it. No, he won't. And Binsky is oh, gonna, to gonna siege up again, though. And this is very oh, dangerous. The Binsky. Are in the medevac. Oh my gosh, and Binsky is gonna lose wow. all of his units now. They're just trading back and forth. Yeah. They're like, all this right, you can have insane. my army. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Very smart. Not, not bad, but oh, not being able to save that. Very nicely done by Select. And but Select also, I mean, that was awesome by Select, but Binsky made a huge mistake there. Yeah. Uh, Binsky is now making sure that he will never supply block himself again, as he just made like eight depots. <laughs> and right on that moment, Select is actually the one. <laughs> Uh, who is supply block, but oh, if he wouldn't have picked up all those marines, I think he could have easily taken that army because that one tank from Select was so low on HP. And then I think Select would have been in quite a bit of trouble. Select ended up, uh, if he would have ended up losing those units as well, 
Uh, Binsky would have been the one who would have a sort of contain. Yeah. But Binsky does have good positioning. Now Select is yeah. going to try to contest that. But uh, Select's oh, army is a lot again, bigger. Binsky is leaving at the worst possible time with those medevacs. And oh my gosh, he needs to be careful. Select actually targeting down that one medevac with all of his marines, but he's fine. <laughs> These two guys are just like playing like Castle Wars. They're just rallying <laughs> troops across <laughs> the map. <laughs> Dude, Castle Wars was another really addictive game. I was good at that game. And <laughs> Anyway, uh, both of them playing back and forth. Stim is going to initiate, and Binsky does not have that just yet. So that's going to hurt him so much. All the Marines going down. Select now has a continuation drop into the main base, if he so chooses. Taking out one of the siege tanks, yes, he will push forward. And Binsky just dropped a Mew in between his tanks. Yeah, that was really, really awkward. <laughs> and here's the death drop, by the way. Uh, maybe and if you can Binsky, Stim with a couple of oh Marines. Oh, God. Binsky isn't going to see this. Uh, he has a few Marines, but it's just yeah, not going to be not enough. enough. Here come the tanks, here comes the Doom Drop for Select, uh, Doom Drop, he's going to lose one tank immediately, but that's about it, and Vinci's going to try to do something about it. Oh, he's going to pull all the Marines, but there are so many uh, Marines over here for Select. Yeah, and this is going to be it, I mean, so many SCVs dying really gives the advantage over Select, 131 to 5, and 275. Marines, they just don't die. Yeah. There are so many medifacts over here for Select that all these Marines that just stay alive. Stim still isn't finished, by the way, for Binsky. That's the big problem. And with four medifacts, you can actually do whatever you want. Now clearing up this one turret, he has an escape route now. This is getting from bad to worse. Binsky is on the ropes. He does go ahead and situate his third base, but uh, really, that's his only saving grace. No, not even. Select is getting his third base, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, Select is just going to win straight out right here. Oh, Pinsky does uh, hang in there, but just now picked off uh, most of those medevacs, but he lost an insane amount of SCVs. So that killed 40 SCVs throughout this entire game. Uh, Select's third base is also, well, a little bit quicker, even though the orbital is quicker for Binsky. Select is actually able to saturate it, which is often pretty important when you take expense. Uh, silly TVT over here, but uh, in the end, it seems like our gauntlet champion, our gauntlet carrier, gauntlet holder, is going to pull through once yeah. more on the red. It does 141 supply now to 91. Binsky needs to do something really, really big right now, and that would be something like drops. He needs to do something that returns him a lot, but just as he goes to drop yet again, Select is going to utilize his insanely good micro, just tearing through everything Binsky has. Binsky has nothing, GG's, and Select will take the fourth and final game. And he is the carrier of the gauntlet. You don't even have to say it, man. Okay. Don't even say it no more. Okay, redo. No, you got to redo the whole thing. No, I'm not going to do it anymore. Select is now the carrier of... Yes, he is. Well played by Select. And Select picked up $300 today by playing in the North American edition of the Gauntlet. This also means that we will see Select next time. And let me just double check when the next NA uh, Gauntlet is. All you guys who did not get picked today, don't be sad. Next time I'll be picking players and I might just pick you. So don't give up yet. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. Exactly. And more importantly, today two people qualified for the fan voting. That is Xlav and that is Select. Yep. And they deserved it. And don't forget, we have other servers as well, not just the North American nope. one. Kareen is going to be tomorrow, so definitely check that out. It's going to be the same time. Uh, and last week we had Hart, we had Alive, we had uh, Ryung, Huang Sin, Crank. and... I'm sorry? Crank. Crank. And we had Vibe as well, but yep. he's not... August, August 15 is going to be the next time we're going to host a uh, gauntlet series over here on NA. That's also going to be the last one on the NA server. So guys, stick around. I will probably be picking plays with that one. So I will try to make as many of you p uh, as happy as possible. I had fun. We're not completely done yet. We're going to head over to a small commercial break and then we're going to close out the show. So guys, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave us hanging. Gauntlet.